front of the lens. They're not. <laughs> Just go ahead and record. It is. Okay. How's it going, guys? Teach me grappling. Uh, I'm back, and I got Timmy Song here. Um, today, I'm going to bring in the Crucifix series that I, I teach all my guys, and I uh, hope you guys can learn something. Again, a lot of people like the crucifix. Crucifix is a great move, and I have kind of my own twist on a, a few different positions, but some of this may be, you know, the same thing that you already know. Um, maybe, hopefully, you can take a few details. I'm gonna try to break this thing up into a few different videos because there's so much to it, but for right now, I'm gonna give you guys just uh, some simple entries and then some talk about some drills you guys can do. So, let's go ahead and we'll start. He's gonna be on his hands and knees, and then, Obviously, a crucifix can be done with both legs. So I could have, let's say I'm going after his left arm. I could have my left leg wrap around his arm, or I could have my right leg wrap around his arm. See that? Now, um, let me just bring it back here. So when you guys get on top of someone, like you go towards their back and you're going for the seatbelt, a lot of times if this leg is here, first you're gonna have the dummy opponent who grabs your leg. And if you don't know what you're doing, sometimes it's, or they're a really good wrestler, maybe they'll drive, like they'll drive and knock you down, and then now you're here, and then if he can clear his arm out of there, and either put it over there, or put it over here, he's gonna take you down, and that's not good. So remember that, like wrestlers, a lot of times are the ones you like to get in this because they love to grab legs. Um, so if you're small, and he grabs the first leg, Let's say he grabs this leg and I'm going towards his back. I'm not going to crucifix him yet, okay? I'm first, I'm, what I'm going to do is push on his head. I'm going to try to sprawl. But once I move around it, he might grab the second leg. If he grabs the second leg, that's perfect. Go ahead and give the leg and triangle and pinch your thighs. Don't try to sprawl out of this. This is gold for you. So a lot of guys will be afraid because maybe if it's two wrestlers, He's a wrestler, I'm a wrestler. We're, I'm gonna try to cross face or armpit, like, like an arm drag, and try to fight him while he, no, no, just be tough and hold, and try to fight him right here and cross face him. I don't want him to let go of that. If he lets go and I go behind him, remember, like a wrestling match, he can still roll and get to his guard now, or sit and get to his guard. So I had a good opportunity and I don't wanna let that get away. So. If I pass the first one, yeah, if I pass the first one and I go here and he grabs that, just go ahead and give the leg and try them. Now, you might argue, maybe he's gonna drive into me. That's fine. Remember, this position right here is great for you, okay? In wrestling, it's not, but in jujitsu, it's better. See, let me explain this. In wrestling, we end up here, go ahead and come around though. Just walk around. This is actually most commonly called the Peterson position. It's not named after me, okay? But it's a common wrestling position where I'll hold my wrist, and now um, I'll show you the uh, end position for wrestling. Um, there's different variations, but this is basically it. He just goes two on one, yeah? And then now he's pinning me in a wrestling match. But in jujitsu, it's totally backwards. He is not in control, okay? He's not in control. If I'm here, I have a crucifix. So this is a good position for us, whether our right leg controls his arm or if it's my left leg, okay? So we wanna get that arm and wrestlers out there that are kinda getting into jujitsu, you gotta understand this position because you don't wanna, you don't wanna, it's totally flip-flopped, it's backwards. So again, I'm, I'm sprawling on the guy and if he grabs that second leg, just go ahead and go. And if he tries to turn, like to face me or cut to a double, it doesn't matter how he rolls, I'm here. This is good. Um, go ahead and let's come back. What I meant was, if, if he hooks my, my leg and he tries to turn like a high crotch and then get to a double leg, like that, he might have thoughts like that. So if he grabs right here, look, I just secure the seatbelt. And again, wrestlers don't do this because of the Peterson. This is considered a dangerous thing. He'll grab my wrist and roll me. If he rolls, he in, the, in wrestling, he's winning. But in jiu-jitsu, I'm winning, okay? You can always move around, Dom. Get some good angles, okay? So 
once you guys are here, I don't care if he has my wrist, it's fine. If he holds my wrist, I'm just gonna hug him anyway. If he tries to push my wrist down, that's fine. I'll cross face and I'll threaten his neck. When I threaten his neck, I trust me, this left hand is gonna let go because he's gotta address the issue. Because in a wrestling match, I'm not allowed to do this. Okay, you'll see cross facing, but now guess what, I'm allowed to do this. Now I'll go to his wrist and we have control. Now, on the finish, when I'm here, I wanna make sure I get under his chin. So again, I'm gonna, I don't even have a, super, a really good plan today, guys, but I'm gonna give you guys the basics. Turn my thumb and I wanna make like kinda like a knuckle right here and I wanna drive it down from his neck and push so if he puts his chin down, chin down, I'm gonna sneak under his chin. He doesn't have an arm to defend, so it should be relatively easy. Sometimes he pushes it down and he tries to slide down so he can get his back on the floor. You don't want him to do that. So you, what you want to do is you want to hug and keep everything tight. Now go ahead and slide down. See, and then my legs right here, my leg is controlling his arm. So this knee is up, like not lazy. So if he slides down, see the arm escaping a little bit. Now look, my knee is up like this. So when he slides, it's controlling him. And then as he tries to slide, this one's controlling him. Now he tries to put chin down and I just go here and I get under his chin. And then now once I'm here, I'll pull him back up. Once I get to like this, here, I can try to choke with one arm and pull like a gi choke, like there. Or I could also pull him up by rolling my hips to the other side. So watch how I do this. I take my right leg and I bring my knee towards the mat and that'll bring him up on top of me, okay? So now that, I, now that I got him on top of me, I can pull my left hand out if you need to. So as I'm here, when I pull this out, he's gonna have a left hand. Now I can clean it up, push it away, and then hit a rear naked choke. Or for some of you guys that like the palm to palm, you can also palm to palm. Um, again, I usually rear naked choke myself, but uh, it's up to you. You figure out whether you like this position or if you like this position. Okay. What I don't want to do is do it when I'm over here. So if I'm here like this, guys, and I try to take my left hand out to do it, he'll slide. See how he got away? Because I lack control when I take this out. So remember that. If he's sliding down, use this to keep him in place so he can't slide down further. And then now, as he attempts, I'm going to use my legs to pull him. And then once I pull him up, that takes pressure off. Now I can do this. Now if he tries to slide down, I've got him on my chest right now. Even in this position. I don't have him all the way over there, but he's on my chest now. So try to slide down. See how I'm here. Now he's pulling down on the choke and he can't do anything. He, he's on top of me. If I tip over to here, he might slide right off and then he's out, okay? So now let's talk about the legs. I have my right leg over his arm, okay? So it's over his arm right now. Sometimes you're gonna have your left leg, okay? Now, the way this works, his arm in this position, he can't slide down because of the way my left leg is. Like if he slides down, you, he'll feel that my left leg is controlling his arm. If this leg is here, it is possible, especially if my left leg is lazy, that he can slide down and he can come out. So I want you guys, I'm gonna give you guys two submissions to think about that, that will help you understand this. When it's in this position, think about an Americana. You guys see the Americana on his shoulder? So if he slides down, it kind of makes his arm look like an L shape, like an Americana, okay? Now I use that to bring him, you see either tap him out or make him come up. That makes him come up. So if he starts to slide down, I can use this manipulation to make him come back. If I'm like this, it looks more like a kimura. Okay, see, see how it looks? His arm is in a more of a kimura position. If he's in a kimura position, I can hold his arm, but I won't be manipulating it the same. So if he slides down, okay, it does tighten his arm, but if I were to turn to try to hurt his arm in the kimura fashion, this would really let him kind of 
go, go ahead and slide down a little more. Now, I still got him trapped, but I run out of room to hurt him in this position. I would have to go to the reverse of plata. So, and we will get to that, okay? So I'm not gonna use this as a submission right here, okay? I will when I go to reverse of plata, but it's not the same as, like I can't manipulate Timmy to come back up, is what I'm trying to say. So if my, if my legs go like this, it doesn't kimura him and make him come back. He can stay where he is. Now the funny thing about this is he can't, he can't slide all the way out. He can't, but as long as I'm secure. But what he can do in this position is escape by going up. So when he goes up, go ahead and sit on your butt, and then all he's gonna do is it's kind of like a limp arm. He'll lean this way and he'll pull his arm out like a limp arm. You see that? So when I have his leg, arm like this, and it's controlled by the, the lower leg, I call this the lower leg because, um, just go ahead and leave your arm again. Like, if I'm kind of on my side, this is my top leg, this is the bottom leg. I know if I'm on my back, it's kind of hard to tell. Then you have a leg that's closer to his feet and a leg that's closer towards north where his head is. So however you want to visualize this, you want to understand which leg is controlling. So if I have this type of control, his escape is to kind of like, imagine he's trying to elbow somebody up here. See that? To get his arm out. Now I could try to pinch and try to hold that thing, but remember, if I don't put some pressure on this shoulder, like let's say I was lax, or even I was pulling him this way, he could limp on, and that's not good, okay? If you guys have this one, you'll notice he can't do a limp arm because his arm is under tension when I have it like an Americana. So the way out for him is to slide down, and hopefully, for, for his sake, I don't control the elbow and he can do this. See that? And then if he slides it out sufficiently, before I apply the tension, he's gonna escape. He could slide all the way down, maybe, or even slide down far enough and hit a backward roll. Can you do a backward roll? And if he backward rolls, he ends up on top. Okay, and I know this is really complicated to understand, so I may not be the best at teaching this. I mean, I, I, I usually break this down for my students long enough and they eventually get it, but as I'm teaching you guys, I hope you guys are getting something. It may not be the best, easiest system to, to swallow. Some of you guys have maybe have coaches that teach better than me, but uh, something I'm pretty good at, at doing myself. I just, I'm still new at teaching this, so. So try to understand this. If the bottom leg is holding, his best bet on getting his arm free, as far as getting his arm free, is to sit up and pull it out, like that. That's what he wants to try to do. And if I'm like this, his best bet is to slide down and pull his arm out that way, okay? Now having said that, if I, I can hold him with both. If this one's here and my knee stays like this, he slides down, he doesn't go anywhere. But remember, he can't go down. And if he tries to go up, when I'm here, I switch, and now this leg is in control, and I can get an arm bar, okay? So watch, if I control his body, seat belt, I might have wrist control, like a, like kind of like a gift wrap, and then watch my right knee. When I have top leg control, I lower my right knee to the mat, like this. And I get a tap, okay? When you do this, don't be loose. If I'm loose, his hand might come out, okay? So I wanna pinch my knees at first, and I, and I bring my left toes, watch my left toes. I'm gonna bring them over here, and then I'm gonna lower my right knee. And there's nowhere to run for his arm. As he tries to wiggle his wrist, there's nowhere to go. Now, if he back arches, he'll relieve pressure. You guys see this? If he back arches, he relieves the pressure a little bit. See, come around here, Dom, so you can just get the best view. See, I, I've run out of like bridge and I can't do it. See how far he went over? So what do I want to do? If I want to arm bar him, are you good there, Dom? Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, come to the front again. What I want to do is hold him in place. Hold him right here. When he tries to bridge, don't let him. And then lower your knee, okay? The other idea is you check the choke. He puts the chin down and he slides down to avoid the choke. I attack the arm bar and I get the choke. So this double attack, like in chess, is like brutal. 
This is why the crucifix is so effective. Because not only do you have his arms controlled, and he can't defend his neck with nothing but a chin down, but I also have an attack on the arm, if you know how to use this, okay? Now there are variations, like you can crisscross the legs like this. I don't like it as much. I like the triangle, and then I, I move my feet. I don't want to be over here. I, it doesn't hurt his arm. I want to make him like he's on a crucifix. I want to make his arm come to here. You see how his arm stretched? Now I don't let him do a back bridge, because if he back bridges, he'll put his arm in a safe position again. See, now there's not enough tension. So I want to keep him over here. I want to move like this, and then now, I keep, as he bridges, I don't let him, and I Or if he's so strong to bridge, attack his neck. And then now, once you attack his neck and you get up here on the shoulder, you can one arm choke, like that, or I can take the hand out and get the full rear naked. Okay, so there's gonna be definitely more series on this. But so you guys, again, reviewing the basics, I'm on top, I wanna hook, I don't care which one. And remember, all of these submissions can be done from here too. I can hurt his arm that way, but usually what happens when you hurt his arm, he'll switch to the other leg. And then now it's possible that I could hurt his arm like this too, okay? Now it's not likely, but it is possible, okay? The most common situations is to go to the wrist on the far side to complete the crucifix, go for your choke. Most of the time he's gonna try to roll or you can make him roll. And then once you're here, make sure he doesn't slide down. If he slides down, keep him here. And now the last drill I'm gonna give you guys before I go away today is straighten the leg, switch. Straighten the leg, switch. Straighten, switch. And you're just pummeling your legs around his arm, okay? Not tapping him out, just always controlling him. If, if I'm here and I wanna move, manipulate him, look, I move his arm and he either taps or he comes up, I watch how I manipulate the arm right here, okay? I'm just gonna straighten, switch. If he tries to avoid, like so I can't, like try to hide your wrist. See how he's trying to hide the wrist? Look guys, I straighten and I switch. Now I can hurt his arm in this direction and then I switch. And he can try to avoid, like try to get the arm out in other words. I just switch, now make sure you don't tap, just move so that you don't have to tap out. Yeah, see how I made him go over here? Now he can arch a little bit to avoid. Now look, try to move your wrist to escape. Boom, I switch, and I switch, and I switch. And so I'm learning, and he's also learning. He's learning how to manipulate his arm so he doesn't tap out, he's trying to hide from it. But I'm just learning how to make switch moves. Switch, triangle, switch, triangle. And I'm doing it without watching myself. You can't see what's going on, you gotta feel it. So this is very important. So you know, if a guy's sliding down and you're about to lose him, you can switch and then control it this way, if you like. Or if you wanted to manipulate his arm to hurt his arm, like I said, this wouldn't hurt him that much, it'll just control him, okay? I could stretch it, switch, and then I can hurt him into coming up on top of me. You wanna know how to manipulate. And obviously, guys, we have to control this side, whether by wrist control, shoulder, or if I hold the seatbelt, I have to keep my right arm snug against his right chest, uh, around his rib cage here, his shoulder area. I have to keep it tight so he can't go that way. So if he starts to roll towards my legs, see where he is? I don't want him to get all the way over to his knees. If he goes to his knees and now I'm slipping off the back, he's eventually gonna pull this out, okay? And then you're done with your game. So when you have his leg or his arm, you wanna keep the seatbelt right here, maybe even threaten the neck to pull him back. And now I've got him back in the saddle and I'm ready to keep attacking, okay? All right, guys, I think that's enough. Everybody's probably mad at me for all these long videos. So there's a lot of information on the crucifix. I'm gonna be giving you guys entries for the crucifix and also finishes 
how to put everything together. This is just the start, okay? So this will be crucifix video number one. Thank you guys so much. I wanna uh, talk about uh, the rash guard. Again, we've got our uh, license plate rash guard, highway symbol on the back, how's my back look? Okay, right there. Um, if you guys wanna try to win, we're gonna be doing a raffle again for the rash guard. Uh, 10 bucks or more if you guys donate to or contribute to the Patreon channel for Teach Me Grappling. Click on the link down below in the description box and you'll go into a raffle for the month of September. Um, if you guys are nine bucks or less, you'll go into the raffle for the t-shirt, okay? We also have a t-shirt that looks just like this and we're gonna raffle that away as well. So, thank you so much, Timmy. Thank you guys so much. Everybody who contributes, you got, you're helping me a ton. For me to keep doing this for you guys, I really need you guys to try to contribute to the channel and keep making it bigger and better. So if you haven't hit subscribe, please hit subscribe, watch my videos, uh, and as well, share it with your friends, uh, share it on Facebook, share it on in Instagram, whatever, talk about it, um, tweet about it, do what you can, and uh, please help me out, and we're gonna keep this content coming to you. Thank you so much, we'll see you tomorrow.